Organizing your writing, especially a longer piece of writing, can be a big challenge. There's so many things to think about when we think about how we want to begin and what comes next and then what happens after that and how we wrap it up. Today, I want to talk about three different ways that can really help you plan your writing and execute it. Three strategies that are going to help you do the writing and help your reader make sense of their reading. Today, we're talking about three ways to visually organize your writing. So three different ways to visually organize your writing are subheadings, pictures, and dividers. And I'd like to show you what all of these look like, and then let's think about how we might use these strategies together. So the, so the first one is subheadings, and this is probably the most direct way that we can visually organize our writing. Looking at this piece by Glenn Weldon, as we scroll down, it's a review of Moon Knight. We see an introductory bit, and then we see a subheading, the reluctant hero setup backfires. And going down, Moon Knight is mostly not about Moon Knight. These, even in this relatively short piece of writing, these two subheadings tell us what Glenn Weldon is going to be talking about. Up top, we have some background and context and a little bit of synopsis. Then we have a whole section. The reluctant hero sets up back, set up backfires. The reader knows that everything in this section is going to be about that idea. And maybe even more importantly, Glenn Weldon, as he's writing, knows that everything he writes in this section is going to be about that idea. When he's ready to switch sections, it gives us a new subheading. It's bigger than our regular font. It's in bold, which our regular font is not. And this tells us that this section is all about how the show Moon Knight is not actually really about the character Moon Knight. Let me show you another example. This is from The Ringer, which rom-com montages would make for good dates. I love this piece. But as the writer talks about a new movie, they introduce it with a subheading. And in fact, you can even see these little sub subheadings, these sub subsections throughout. And when we move on to a new movie, we have a new subheading, 13 going on 30, and then the sub sub sections that are organizing the writer's idea about that movie. This is a way that I love to write with subheadings because as a writer, it keeps me straight. It reminds me, what am I supposed to be talking about at exactly this moment? And it helps me keep the main thing, the main thing. Now, a second way that we could visually organize our writing is with visual dividers. And there are a couple of different ways that writers can do this. This is a piece about Anne Boleyn from Long Reads. And as we scroll down, this is a much longer piece of writing. You will see that there is a division here created visually with these three little stars in the middle of a page. Have you ever read an article or a book that does that? Sometimes it's a little line. Sometimes it's a tiny illustration. Often it's these kind of asterisks in the middle. And what that signifies to both the writer and the reader is pause, take a deep breath. We're about to start a new idea. We're starting a new topic in this piece of writing. So that is one way to create a visual break and help you organize your writing into chunks. One big idea, you write about it for a few paragraphs, you want to shift to a different idea, just draw a little image, a line, a couple of asterisks, and move forward. A different way to do that is with what we call a drop cap. And I know you've seen that before. You might just not know the name. This is a piece about Toni Morrison by Zadie Smith. This is a drop cap. It's this big, I, I kind of imagine them as like storybook letters, right? Like once upon a time, it's this bigger um, font that's just the first letter. 
And you will see that Zadie Smith uses them a lot. She has a lot of different sections in this piece. Some of them are multiple paragraphs. Some of them are just one paragraph, but when she's ready to shift to a different big idea, she uses the drop cap to help her do that. You can actually do this in Google Docs and in Microsoft Word if you're writing on one of those platforms, just search for it and you can put this in. It's also one of those things that just makes you feel cool. You feel like a real writer when you have a drop cap. The third way is images. Now, images can be evidence. Images can just help visually break things up for the reader, make it more interesting. But images can also kind of chunk and section our writing. So this is a piece um, in Outside Magazine by Ben McGrath. And look, this kind of has all of them. He does the line. He does the drop cap. And... He visually chunks sections by putting images that go with that section at the beginning. So we have an image there, another drop cap up, another image there, because they're about to begin this canoe journey, and so on and so forth. Another way, actually, he's visually doing this is by adding these big chunky blank spaces to help connote up oh, something different is happening wake up and pay attention here's one more example this is just an informational article about president Zelensky, and we can see images here kind of being placed throughout that's an ad it's not a real image but it's being placed throughout to break up different sections of this piece where they move on to a new section then they move on um, with a picture at the forefront it kind of just breaks things up for the reader but also breaks up their understanding as they're reading you come to an image you stop you look at the image you kind of take a breath you shake off the last idea and you can see this even uses that contrasting conjunction transition the important thing to remember here is that this is as much for the writer as it is for the reader. It has those dual purposes. Now you might have a teacher who does not want you to use these journalistic conventions in your writing. Maybe you're writing a piece of literary analysis and your teacher wants it to be super, super academic. You can so still what I do it. when I'm using subheadings or pictures or dividers to organize my writing is I just make that subheading here. Here's my big idea. And then I write about it for a little while. Then I move on to a new idea and I type that idea right here and I move on for a little while. And then I type that idea and I move on for a little while. You could, instead of typing your idea, you could put an image. Instead of typing your idea, you could put some kind of visual divider, maybe those asterisks or a line. And if your teacher is cool with this, because this is how journalists really write, great, then you can leave it. If not, all you do when you are done writing is you erase the picture or the divider or the subheading and look at that. Now you have just page upon page upon page, paragraph upon paragraph upon paragraph of writing that flows together. So where in your writing would you personally, as a writer, benefit from putting some subheadings in or some pictures or some dividers to help you chunk your thinking and think about the different pieces of ideas you want to put into your writing? Where could you help a reader by dividing your information into chunks that are either marked by an image or a divider or a subheading so that they can kind of take a mental rest in between ideas and prepare themselves for what's next? Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any mini moves for writers.